Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to Nightfalls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. Join me around the campfire and I'll tell you of the first time I felt called to escape the rush of daily life. But first, I want to say a warm thank you to you all for listening in. This show really is nothing without you. Tonight, if you'll hear it, Allow me to tell you of the wild and wonderful country I learned to slow down and be present in. Australia. I lived there for a year, and the country is a special place in my heart. One of my best friends, Loch, is from there, and it's where I decided to follow my dream, which ultimately brought me here. Before I begin my tale, let's take a moment to relax. Come to a comfortable position and allow your eyes to gently drift closed. As you lie there, enjoying a moment of stillness, perhaps for the first time all day, draw in a deep breath, exhaling. Feel the tension in your shoulders loosening and your head beginning to sink a little deeper into the soft cushions beneath you. Breathing in once more, tune out any noise being made beyond the borders of your body. Exhaling, know that there is only you and the sound of your breath to fill this moment. The noise beyond your bedroom door or even beyond the window panes can no longer distract you. Your peace can no longer be disturbed by intrusive thoughts or fleeting recollections of the day that has passed and the conversations you find yourself caught up in. Your mind and body are rooted in the present. This is your opportunity to relax and settle back into your body. Inhaling once more, feel that breath drawing you into the present each time it washes into your body. Exhaling, if you're feeling ready, I'll begin my tale. It is a slow, warm day here in Night Falls, and the forest seems to be particularly alive, with coos and tweets, gentle rustles, and the lively gurgling of the creek. The afternoon stretches out long and lazily ahead of me, and I feel pulled to the woods, invited in by the golden twinkle of sunlight streaming through the pines. The forest floor is soft and springy underfoot, thanks to the sun's bleaching of the pines' fragrant needles, which have fallen to carpet over the thick, twisting roots and rocks of the path. I created this path, cutting through the thick bush as I went, carving out the way. I followed the natural curve of the land, its undulating hills and rocky outcrops, mapping trails through the forest. I strolled contentedly along my path, barefoot and munching on nuts and dried fruit, humming gently. 
As I reach the area where the path rises up to look over the wider section of the creek, I hear a soft splashing that draws my attention to the water. For a short moment, I see a glossy brown arc carved through the soft current of the water before disappearing below. I crouch behind the ferns that line my path and watch patiently until he surfaces again. And there he is, a gleaming otter moving gracefully through the crystal water of the creek, twisting his body this way and that, rising to splash playfully on the surface before disappearing again protected from my view by the golden reflection of the sun on the surface of the water. The next time his little whiskered face bobs into view, he reaches out with his stubby arms and turns over to float on the water's surface, crossing his little paws over his chest, the picture of relaxation, bobbing gently like a log. This stirred something in my memory, reminding me of another creature I once saw bathing in the afternoon sunlight. Many years ago, I found myself on a similar walk far, far away. I'd been following a twisting path through a denser, darker forest where the air was much thicker and where my feet had to be clad in tough walking boots. Although far away, the forest was equally alive with birdsong, warbling calls, and the flap of parrot wings. The ground was dustier, the soil mixing with the sand that blew in from the beach. I'd been following the path for fifteen minutes or so, and the landscape had changed with each turn, from the open sandy beach to the flat green banks of the river and into the forest of eucalyptus trees, where I now found myself. The river was stained amber with rich tannins, and I followed it, sometimes straying off the path to clamber over rocks and splash the cool water onto my face. Sometimes the river was wide and lively, sometimes narrow and cobbled as it flowed over the hilly terrain. Came around a sharp bend which overlooked a wide stretch of river and paused to take in the view. Something bobbing on the surface caught my eye. At first, I thought it was a log, but it had the particular sheen of wet fur. I tried to make heads or tails of the creature, and my gaze came to meet two shiny black eyes placed above a carved bill. We regarded one another for a few seconds before he ducked below the water with a beat of his flat tail. I waited and waited for the animal to resurface but eventually had the sense that I should leave it in peace. I realised later that this creature was a platypus something I had thought to be an almost mythical being something I certainly never thought I would cross paths with. And it's true for most of my life that would have seemed an impossibility. I'd spent so long being swept up by life, living for my work and focused on busyness, that I hardly took a moment to look around me. I'd hardly stopped to breathe the air or look at the flowers. Millions of creatures could have scampered across, flew over or splashed by my path and I would not have noticed. 
My career had been hectic and successful, yet I had never felt such a sense of contentment as I did in that moment in the forest, in the right place, at the right time. I hurried from meeting to meeting, running on adrenaline and cortisol, never finding the balance that I needed to be present in the world. And so, putting pause to my career, I spent some time travelling the world and catching up on lost time. I began moving within the world, keeping attuned to my senses. I smelt flowers, listened more carefully to my surroundings, looked out for beautiful plants and scurries of movement. In the city, I slowed my pace too. I stopped to take in the delicious smells drifting out of partially hidden, unassuming restaurants and discovered new and exciting dishes, fragrant. Soup-filled dumplings in a winding alleyway here, hot spicy stew in a faraway neighbourhood there. I began stopping to listen to buskers, smiling at kind-eyed strangers on the metro, and slowly, with small changes, found myself beginning to really live. This newfound openness accumulated in that moment, the quiet meeting I had with one of the world's most elusive animals, in a beautiful, far-off corner of the world. I'd taken some time off work and packed an old backpack and began to explore. I eventually found myself in Australia, taking a pause in a tiny town where a small number of houses situated themselves in the hills around a wide river which runs from the ocean into wild rainforest. There is not much movement here, only the one road which runs past the village. A long road favoured by travellers that winds around the twisting coastline, separating miles of sandy white beach from lush forest, warmed by hot sun and refreshed by a cool breeze which comes off the wild southern seas. It's not hard to be entranced by nature here, from the dramatic ocean scenery to the abundance of fauna that make this spot their home. At certain times of the year, humpback whales can be seen from the shore on their migratory journey, sometimes with calves swimming in rhythm along their flank. On occasion, they can be seen batting their tails against the water's surface, catching the sun on the wet sheen of their skin, or blowing slow jets of water from their backs. They can even be seen propelling their humongous bodies into the air and crashing back into the water with surprising grace for creatures of their size. It is hard to distinguish the horizon here, with the vivid blue of the ocean fading into the rich colour of the sky. And looking out, you imagine that the expanse of the ocean must stretch endlessly out before you. I had taken a liking to the spot, not just for the natural peace it offered, but for the people who lived here too. I had taken on a job making rich hot coffee at the town's only store, and I had been taken by the serenity of those who had made a home here. I befriended a septuagenarian surfer who spoke gently and drank his coffee slowly, 
whilst fixing his eyes on the water. He had made this place his home many, many years ago, building a house on the hill and spending his evening by firelight, waxing his surfboard and making jams and pickles to sell at the local market. It seemed the ocean, for him, brought the sense of peace and belonging that I myself found at nightfalls. Many people passed through the cafe, travellers mostly, but also my neighbours, writers, artists, retired office workers and farmers, and almost everyone took the time to chat, moving about their day purposefully, but peacefully, spending time to see those around them. They told me about their forays into the forests, their knowledge of the nature around us, and about their projects. It seemed everybody had projects there, bread making and brewing, pickling and pottery, playing music and dancing. I felt inspired to work with my hands and to learn to express myself in a way which I hadn't in years. During my time there, I stayed in a modest bungalow. I would eat on the decking that overlooked the water, keeping an eye on the birds that would eye my dinner warily. The most common predators were the large, gleaming white cockatoos, whose golden crest stuck comically above their heads. On occasion, they would try to land on my shoulders and peck at my cereal. The vibrant Rosella parrots were equally impolite, but I found them particularly charming due to their vibrant red and blue feathers and wide, cautious eyes. There were plump kookaburras with wide beaks and fluffy brown feathers living in the trees nearby, whose cackles would echo through the night, setting one another off in peals of laughter until the valley was taken over by the sound. When I wasn't hiking or swimming in the ocean, I would spend hours playing my guitar on the bungalow's decking, plucking out scales with fingers that became defter with time until I could play complicated songs that drifted in the air against the steady rhythmic whoosh of the ocean waves. The abundance of eucalyptus trees in the town meant it was common to share your garden with gentle koalas who would balance precariously in the forks of their boughs they grasped the light bark effortlessly with sharp claws and sleepily munched on leaves, perched on their haunches, slumped lazily into a dark, furry ball. Sometimes they would run out of waxy leaves and reach out with lazy limbs, slowly stretching each muscle as they moved higher amongst spindly branches with ease and with no hint of concentration. When they were at their most lively, they would call out in gravelly grunts, surprisingly deep and ugly sounds for such languorous creatures. They would gaze back down at me with an air of placid disinterest as I watched them with their sleepy eyes and friendly faces. There was a grassy meadow in the centre of the tiny town where kangaroos would graze. They appeared social, staying in small, family-like groups, a muscular male watching their surroundings as the mother hopped across the grass, the joey skipping around her feet. I enjoyed watching them navigate the wooden fence that circled around the meadow. The large father would push down with his large legs, 
extending them to spring clear over the top of the fence, before turning and laying his watchful eyes on his family. The babies would seem cautious, but with a few readying bounces, one by one, they would launch themselves over the bottom post of the fence, careful to lower their heads so as not to hit it on the next slat. Only once all the joeys were through would the mother bounce carefully over the top of the fence too, and there they would stay all day, undisturbed by any passers-by. Other more shy marsupials would be found in the forest. My favourites were some of the smaller wallabies, who had puppy-like faces and darker fur, except for the white tufts on the end of their long tails. They would watch me from within the thicket, peering out as I ambled by, and bounding off into the woodlands if I lingered just a little too long. Often, I would walk up the hill and into the wilderness. As I walked further, the track faded to loose gravel and then to dust. Following the wind of the hill, as the forest became thicker. Although the summer is exceedingly warm here, the forests are fed by swirling rivers and streams, and so they are vibrant and lush, with thick ferns and twisting vines. I often crossed paths with another rambler, a young man with worn boots and a rough burlap bag which he seemed to fill with cuttings and foraged items. Often, we would walk in step, with minimal chatter, but enjoying one another's company. I would usually stop by a particularly lively river, turning from the track to walk back to town through the bush in the space opened up by the power lines, and he would always carry on, Sometimes as I sat on my deck hours later, I would see the man return to town. I would welcome him over, and we would share dinner and talk or play cards for a short while, until it became too dark to see by my lantern. Once, I headed out after a peaceful Wednesday afternoon shift, and it was growing dusky by the time I reached my river. It had been stormy the day before, but the warm sun had dried the mud, so I could safely scramble down the bank to watch the torrenting water. As I watched the white rapids, the sky grew darker and the rocks and mossy ground around me began to light up with the soft green light of glowworms. The stars began to emerge above me, and I saw the misty twist of the Milky Way form amongst scattered constellations. I felt an otherworldly calm settle over me. I could feel, in this period, a chance to reconnect with life, with nature, with myself. It was a step on the journey to find out what made me happy in this world, and a way for me to chip away at the tension that had found its way into my body over the previous years. After some peaceful weeks in town, I bought a boxy old car and took a trip down the long winding road along the coast. The roads twist into hairpin bends here and there, rising and falling, I would put gentle, jazzy music on the old radio and wind the windows down, emptying my mind, seeing nothing but the road unfurling ahead and the sparkling water to my right. My body would make the instinctive movements needed to trace the curves of the road, as if independent of thought. Soon, 
passed through a small but bustling town where I paused for a cup of coffee. I drank it on the beach, overlooking the pale blue semicircular inlet of the vast, swooping bay, where I watched a black and white border collie splash in the shallows, wetting his long, fluffy coat, his tongue lolling out. His owner laughed as he ran back to him and shook sprinkles of water from his coat, a welcome shower in the warm midday sun. Past the town, the road was overtaken by nature, with tall gum trees beginning to obscure my view of the coast. The sea remained hidden as I found myself rising up through the rainforest, emerging on a hill where there stood a lonely shop. Customers wearing hiking clothes sat on its terrace, taking in the views of rolling forested hills that lay inland, away from the sweeping vista of the ocean. Carrying on further through the hills, I emerged once more onto an ocean road, where dramatic dusty orange cliffs almost hid the white sandy beach from my view far below. I pulled the car over at a viewpoint and got out to gaze upon the landscape. Tall limestone pillars rose from the ocean, gigantic vertical islands of stone, as dusty and orange as the land I stood upon, seeming suspended there in the water. I had the impression that I was looking out across another planet, one where gravity adhered to different rules. There were many of them, all gently eroded by the sea, but nonetheless strong and domineering, holding firm against the foaming waves, as they appeared to have stood for many, many years. I followed a narrow path along the cliff, watching for lizards and skinks that scampered away at the sound of my footsteps. It led me to an old staircase, chipped into the cliff face and reinforced with stones, planks of wood and slightly frayed rope. I carefully picked my way down onto the beach. Once finally on the sand, I took a minute to enjoy the salty ocean breeze and sip cool water from my flask. I strolled along the water's edge, taking off my sandals and cooling my feet in the tide. Here and there, I spotted small blue jellyfish floating innocuously out in the shallows, bobbing gently in the waves. I sat there for a while, taking in the beauty of the flat expanse of the ocean. A couple of dainty white sails rose from the still waters in the distance, and I tracked their slow progress as they drifted almost imperceptibly along on the gentle breeze. Other than that, the blue stretch of the sea expanded uninterrupted towards the horizon, where it met the sky. I felt like I was looking out towards the edge of the world, I by that time had become a keen diver and fantasised about the creatures that could be found just offshore. I'd seen my fair share already. I had been swimming with manta rays, huge, peaceful creatures which seemed to fly through the water on rippling wings. I'd seen shoals of shimmering fish in all colours, little orange clownfish, elegant angelfish and statuesque seahorses. I have explored reefs of intricate coral formations and bobbing anemones. I had even crossed paths with serene sea turtles who watched me curiously from their wise eyes, gliding effortlessly through the water, their shells beautifully marbled in oranges and browns, 
The water here was so crystal clear, so sparkling and cool and inviting. I dreamt that diving under its surface, it would be possible to see the whole ocean spreading out for miles ahead of you. I pictured the shimmering bubbles of air that would float gently up from my body, the glimmer of golden rays of light that would cut through the still water, illuminating the shallows, the metallic shimmer of teeny tiny fish flitting about in their hundreds, gently swaying seagrass and slow drifting seaweed, and the quiet. Plunging under the water, the world goes quiet and everything slows down. You are simply floating, an observer in someone else's world, in such a peaceful world at that. There is nothing more relaxing than bobbing around, hearing nothing but your own heartbeat and steady breaths, exploring a vast and peaceful world full of slow-moving creatures. My favourite were the dolphins, although they weren't so slow. Dolphins are such playful and intelligent creatures. They always seemed excited to see our boat as we zoomed outwards towards the depths. They would swim along, riding our wake, rising in sleek arches to dive into the foamy waves. And the boat came to a stop and we prepared to begin our dive. They would play in the water around us. They would flip above the water and flop down into it, their wet skin shining in the sunlight. In the water, they were just as clown-like. They would swim around me in circles, seeming to watch me out of the corner of their eye, inviting me to play. I would swirl around with them, trying to keep up with their slick movements. One dolphin in particular I came to know. He was made distinctive by his slightly floppy dorsal fin. He would dart in and out of my view, cooing and trilling at me in his high-pitched babble. Whenever I was in his area, I would plunge in the water with my flippers on, and he would be there waiting to say hello. These days, I'm further from the ocean, but I haven't forgotten my love for it. Remembering such stories when taking long dips in the lake, and thinking back to all of the things I've been so lucky to have seen, I believe everyone has a place where they belong, and at the moment mine is here, at night falls. My life has taken me to many places, and I am grateful for every moment, every friend, every landscape, every task that brought me satisfaction. Even for those experiences that taught me what I did not want, for they brought me closer to today. Although we get caught up in the stress, vastness and joy of life, there is truly nothing like being at home and finding a place where you feel truly like yourself. For me, I feel my most content when nestled in awe-inspiring nature I found that if you learn to exist within it, nature offers you all the magic and wonder you need to be present, peaceful, and alive. I'm happy to stay here now, at night falls, but it is nice too to reminisce and remember the places and faces I crossed paths with on my way. And who knows what may lay out before me, waiting to be discovered next. <laughs>